Here comes the toughest part of this job in my opinion, which is to removing that bolt. Okay, see, uh, what you want to do is basically spray PB Blaster over all these three bolts a couple of times, waiting five to ten minutes between each spray, and then uh, what you would need is uh, an extension with a swivel end, and then you need to maneuver this exactly on top of that bolt uh, while making sure it's properly seated over that. I need two hands for this because you don't want to strip that bolt because it's in a really hard to get to. If you happen to strip that bolt, then you need to remove all the bolts that hold the exhaust manifold in and then the bolts that hold your turbo in and then report, uh, remove that as one unit and then take that somewhere to have it removed. Again, this is my car. I'm doing it my way. You do it your way, you know, but I'm not responsible if you strip out that bolt. <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically what you want to do is uh, get this uh, socket on that bolt. So I'll show it to you on this. And then while making sure it's properly seated, at the same time, you don't want to press too much on this because then this will lock in place. The socket will lock in place at the end of your ratchet and then it won't be a swivel socket. It will just be a swivel ratchet or swivel extension. It will just be a regular extension like this. So you want to make sure this stays loose all the while being properly seated over that bolt which you've already sprayed a bunch of uh, PB blaster on, okay? All right, and they break loose like that. <clears throat> oh, and you'll need a good 17 millimeter six point socket for this if you can do it my way. Okay, now if everything has gone according to plan, and uh, I think it has, <laughs> the only thing that are keeping the cylinder head to this uh, engine is the cylinder head uh, bolts. So we're going to go ahead and remove this uh, valve cover and then get to those bolts and remove this valve cover by obviously first twisting and pulling on these ignition coils. And there's actually a 10 millimeter bolt that you'll need to remove that holds in this uh, grounding wire. Make sure you remember to put it back on when you go to reinstall this, okay? Okay, next we remove this piece which is held in by this clamp at the back of our valve cover. Just loosen this. This should come out. There we go. Just set this back there. And then there's this uh, connector for our uh, timing chain tensioner, which we'll have to remove. Just press on that clip, push it out. Now we remove our valve cover. And our valve cover is just held in by these bunch of uh, by these uh, by a bunch of 10 millimeter nuts and bolts that are on the circumference, and then uh, three in the middle. Okay. Okay, and if it's really stuck on really hard, we just put a screwdriver here and pry on the corners a little bit. And once loose, you can just swiggle it out, okay? And here's a look at the top of our cylinder head, and here's our valve cover gasket. Okay, you know what? I'm also going to remove this bracket that's for the for our fuel lines, because it's going to be in the way when we go to initially remove this uh, cylinder head. There we go. Okay, now uh, it's time to remove our uh, head bolts. And to remove those, you're gonna need a special tool uh, made by our boy Volkswagen. I don't know the part number for this, but I'll try to look it up and put it on. But uh, this is a pretty general tool used for a lot of these head bolts, even on the V6 version of the Volkswagen and Audi engines. Uh, use this to remove those, uh, those uh, head bolts too. Uh, you can always just uh, rent this, go to your local, uh, you know, to a specialty shop that works on uh, you know, Volkswagens and Audis, they might rent it to you or these are cheap to buy too. So if you, plan, if you can plan ahead, you can buy it probably for about 10 bucks on eBay or something, okay? And uh, here's the look at, the, this is where the bolts are. I think there is uh, two, three, four, there's 10 head bolts that are holding this in. There's two in here and then these guys. And uh, the way you wanna remove these head bolts is go from the outside end. So we're gonna start from here, go back here, 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 you know, just the opposite of when you're putting on a cylinder head. Anything that's under great torque, it's uh, when removing, you go from the outside in, and then when installing, you go from the inside out, okay? All right, again, you wanna make sure these are properly seated into these uh, cylinder head bolts, and preferably, you wanna use a 
pry bar, but I don't have one, so I'm just using my uh, half inch ratchet. All right, there's one. It's the second one. All right, what you want to do next is just get your uh, magnet and try to fish out these bolts. All right, these bolts and these uh, deep wells on the sides are going to be hard to take out. This one I'm just going to leave in there. I'll take it out when I remove the solar head, okay? All right, and these, sometimes you need to hit this with a rubber mallet to loosen it up, but this one is pretty loose, and, uh, but yeah, on yours it may not be, okay? So just get, uh, take uh, great care. Make sure you have disconnected everything before taking this out, okay? Okay, and here's a look at the top of the pistons. The thing that would break this job would be that if the, you see any cracks on these, well, 90% of the time, these are fine when your timing belt breaks and your valves hit these pistons, just the valves bent. But uh, sometimes the valves break, and or other times they crack top of the piston, and then you pretty much might as well just get a used engine if that happens. But as you can see, we have no cracks in any of these pistons that I can see right now. Obviously, I'm gonna clean these further and take a closer look, but um, yeah, they all look pretty good. I don't think there's gonna be an issue as far as these pistons goes, okay? Alrighty, so here's the shot everyone's been waiting for. Uh, and I think we were pretty lucky on this car. I don't think uh, the car was going that fast. The RPM weren't that high when the timing belt broke. So, you know, it looks like, uh, like on this cylinder, this one's obviously bent. These two are probably bent too. Well, actually, no, probably, but they're probably there. They are bent. This cylinder, however, I don't think any of them are damaged. Uh, they look, they all look good. Um, on this one, these two, I think they're bent. And again, on this cylinder, again, I don't think any of these are damaged either. So it looks like the damage is in uh, this and this cylinder, and uh, minimal at that. But again, we won't be able to tell for sure which ones are bent until we take out the camshafts. The valves come out, they go to the machine shop, and you know they'll be able to check uh, for certain. But I mean, obviously, once you take this cylinder out, take it to the machine shop, it's just, all, just better to just get a complete valve job anyway. It's just good to see that you know, the, the, we might be able to just reuse some of these valves in this engine and then save money, just have them grind it down and the seats grind it and uh, just uh, you know, have them rebuilt, basically. Uh, that saves, uh, I think these valves each are about 15 bucks if I'm not mistaken. So, and there is uh, 20 of these <laughs> on this car. So you save money every time you can use some of these valves. Uh, but again, it's obviously a better idea to just get new valves. But if you're on a tight budget, uh, the machine shop asks you, you can just tell them to just reuse whatever is good just to grind them down and do a valve job on this cylinder head, okay? And uh, obviously you want to be prepared for all the oil that's going to come out of this when you tilt it on the side like this. And so what I'm going to do next is uh, take off that uh, exhaust manifold, that tensioning roller. Then I'm going to remove the camshafts with the timing chain um, uh, tensioner attached to them, okay? All right, and then there is uh, 13 12 millimeter nuts securing this uh, exhaust manifold to this uh, cylinder head. There we go. Okay, what you want to do is to get this special tool that's for your uh, timing chain tensioner. Basically, you put it here and then you put this plastic piece, you put it on the plastic uh, piece that goes on top of your tensioner, and then you, uh, you screw it down. And what this does is puts a little pressure on this chain tensioner. It pushes it down so that when we go to take this off it just doesn't pop all the way up and we're gonna actually not remove this chain. We're just gonna try to just uh, get both camshafts off with this tool attached and just put this put the camshaft aside uh, just as all everything attached together, okay? Since you're not trying to remove this all you want to do is just you know push it down a little bit and once it's held firmly in place you gonna so you wanna you wanna stop. What we're gonna do next is gonna remove, we're gonna remove all these uh, torque screws, which are gonna require a T30 torx bit. We're gonna remove all of them. We're gonna remove these. Everything you see, you're gonna have to remove. 
And actually also we're gonna, at first we're gonna remove this uh, camshaft sensor, camshaft position sensor. You'll need to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts, okay? There we go. All right, so next we're gonna remove all these bolts, all these screws, and all these caps. You wanna make sure you keep track of which one goes where. Uh, you know, if you need to write it down, these are numbered, but you wanna make notes uh, still which one goes where just so you don't mistake it, okay? And it's a good idea to do one camshaft at a time and start from the outside going in, okay? This bearing cap is kind of harder to remove. I think it's because of the, the camshaft seal, but... You should go without saying that we're going to be replacing all these seals, right? Alright, now we're going to remove our camshafts. Trying our hardest to... We don't, we're trying our hardest not to touch these uh, alignments on the chain, uh, on this camshaft chain tensioner, okay? Okay, next it's time to remove these lifters. Uh, what you want to do is there's a right tool for this, but just the small needle nose pliers will do as long as you cover where you're going to be picking it up with these pliers. And of course, on some of these, you can just remove them by hand. The other ones, you know, you can't get your finger in there because it's not enough space like on this one and this one. So, you know, that's what I'm going to have to use. Alright, something even easier. Just use your magnet. Alright, so I just got done removing everything that's, uh, that I could or that I wanted to actually really before I send it to the machine shop. Now I'm just going to clean it off. Something that's standing out though is that I just removed this uh, tensioning roller and it looks, does not look uh, old at all. It's, uh, you know, it feels right, you know, it's not, doesn't have a lot of uh, wear on it. The bearings feel firm and uh, looks new too. So I'm thinking the cause of this uh, tying belt failing was might have been the improper tensioning of that. But uh, I'm gonna check the rest, uh, you know, the roller and the, everything else too later. But uh, as of right now, what's standing out to me is that this tensioner looks pretty new, okay? All right, that didn't take long. Uh, actually, here's the problem. This water pump, as you can see, it is completely shot. There's way too much play in it. Uh, probably did not happen overnight. It started leaking. They probably just ignored it, kept adding water and driving it, and then it finally completely gave out, completely became loose, and the belt probably jumped a couple of teeth, then got maybe just completely jumped, and then uh, it got ruined. Okay, it snapped, and uh, that's how this ended up being in my position. <laughs> um, so yeah, make sure you replace that uh, water pump whenever you replace your timing belt, especially on a car like this where the timing belt job is so, um, you know, it's so difficult and it's so involved that once you get there, just, just put a new water pump in. You know, you bought an Audi, you should not be afraid to spend a little bit more money on the, on the water pump and the maintenance, okay? All right, and here's one last look uh, without all the without the camshaft and the lifters and stuff. And yeah, same ones that we suspected are bent. This one, these two, uh, these two, and you know all the intake valves, with the exception of this, look good. Uh, and again, these so these two cylinders look fine, totally fine. But still, probably gonna get a complete uh, valve job, and I'll just probably just be able to save some money on the on the valves, but. You know, whatever the machine shop recommends, that's what you do. I mean, you obviously want to take it to a reputable machine shop. Uh, preferably a machine shop that's used to working on this Volkswagen, but not necessarily, especially if you're taking out the cams and you're doing the camshaft chain tensioner and the timing and that's involved with that yourself. I've had a, a bad experience once with taking uh, the cams with the cylinder head to a machine shop that was on a Volkswagen and they just did not line it up right when they took the cams off and they put it back on and it was really hard, difficult for me to figure out what was the problem. But uh, but yeah, uh, so now I'm just going to clean this thoroughly, take it to a machine shop, and then we'll pick this back up when I get the cylinder head back from the machine shop. Okay?